This is the second video of a two-part series on setting up a masternode for the coin DigiWage. The first one we covered how to set up the masternode, the first masternode on a VPS and set up all the plumbing that's going to be required to set up subsequent masternodes. Now you can see my I have a total of 36,000 DigiWage coins in here. If I go into my inputs on coin control, you'll see I already have that one master node with the 12,000 coin collateral and I have some stuff, uh, some coins in this change address which we'll spend here in a little bit. This is locked so I can't spend it, uh, but typically I like to manually select coins when I'm sending them, so I'll show that shortly. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our second master node. So we're going to go back to receiving addresses and we're going to create yet another label MN02 and we're going to hit OK and that gives us a second master node address. I'm going to copy that address and I'm going to send but I don't like to do it blindly because if I don't have this locked I could potentially send the wrong inputs so I just I'm going to select it I want to spend from here I, I don't want to touch this even though this is locked I can't spend it anyway see I can't click it but I'm just uh, it's old habits die hard you know, I always select my inputs manually on what the spend should be. When I paste the address, it recognizes that's a label that's in my address or my wallet. And I'm going to put here 12,000 coins that need to go to this address. And I'm going to type in my passphrase, accept the fee. If I go to transactions, yet again another payment to myself because it knows that I'm essentially sending it to myself. And there's my master node one that's locked because it has all the confirmations and required. I started the master node, so therefore it's locked it as a uh, as the collateral, so it doesn't stake because otherwise, if this staked, it would split. Now you can see I have zero confirmations on this one, so it's not locked. But we're good enough to see what the outputs are going to be. So let's go ahead and grab some information from this debug console. So we're going to need another gen key. So there's my gen key. I'm going to copy that and let's put it in our notepad for a later reference. So here's my MN02 gen key now. The transaction hash we're going to get just through master node outputs. There's my first one. Right, we're going to leave that one alone. Here's my second output. And the index is still zero. And I showed in the first video and even in the architecture on how cold wallets are set up on how to look at this stuff in Block Explorer. So we're good here for now. I've got my pieces of information that I need for the gen key and to work on our Linux VPS. So let's put that aside for now. And we're going to go back to our VPS. So here's our original VPS address. Now if I go to settings, you can see here that I have this public address IPv4 that I already used, right? That was my first wallet that was in instance I was bound. Here's my second address, which is my IPv6. And these are free. This is an actual IP address on the internet. It's, a, it's just a longer um, larger pool that eff effectively every network is uh, eventually going to move to because IPv4 is uh, something that we're exhausting pretty quickly. So I'm going to go back into terminal and SSH back into this box. Now you could do the same thing to PuTTY. I've shown how to do that in the first video. I presume you, um, if you're looking at the second setup you may have already looked at the first one. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to log in as root right now because I don't want to log in as the DigiWage user, the DigiWage MN01 user, because I'm going to do some work as root. So I'm going to SSH in there, I'm going to copy and paste my password. Now I'm the root user. If I do ls-l on home, you can see I only have the DigiWage MN user so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the second user for the second instance of my wallet. That's MN02 user. Now if I do an ls-l on home, I've got a home directory for that next user. I'm going to type pssWD digi wage mn02 and I'm going to give that user a password. Retype it to confirm. At least type it correctly. 
Okay, so now I've got my user set up. Now, what we did before is we ran the DigiWage uh, as that user, right? DigiWage uh, daemon as this user and synced up and did all that work, but we don't really need to do that work with the second user because we've already got the first one all set up and ready to go. So what we're going to do is paste this command here that's going to copy recur recursively all directories from this home digiwagemn dot over to my second user's directory. So when I do that and I do an ls on home, see I've got the two users, but now if I do ls on home on this user, this new user, now let's do al because that's going to give me my hidden directories as well. Now I've got I, mean, I effectively made a copy, so I, I'm synced. This wallet is automatically going to be synced because it's copied all the database and everything. The only thing is it's still owned by root, so I need to change that to be owned by the new user. So this command says change ownership recursively to this user and this group for this entire directory. And when I do that, now I hit the up arrow on home. Now you can see that the DigiWage directory is now owned by DigiWage MN02. This is different than the one that's by owned by 01. See, these are separate instances. Now I've done my work. All I have to do is exit out and log back in as the DigiWage MN02 user. Type in my password that I created. Right? If I type who am I, you'll see I'm the MN02 user. And now if I do ps-ef pipe grep on digi, you'll see that it's already running an instance of the daemon for the digiwage01 user. And this plus just means that it's a longer username. So we know that's the digiwage MN01 user. But if I look at my own directory, I have a DigiWage directory here. So let's go back into here before we run the wallet. And we're going to edit our comp file because we wanted to change a few things. Okay. If I cat out the file, it's effectively going to be the exact same as my other user because I copied it. I don't want to have the same information. I'm going to change the RPC port. I'm going to change the IP address. And I'm going to change the private key because I have a new gen key, right? So what we're going to do at first is I need the IP address of the other of my IPv6. Remember, I have an IPv4. One is already mount. So if I do netstat and I grep for 46003, watch this. And actually grep again for listen, right? So this is how you would run netstat dash an pipe grep colon 46003 pipe grep listen. You can see that I'm bound just to this address. Remember, I said don't do zeros or don't, if you don't put the bind or the external IP lines in your comp file, it will bind to zeros. And that means that you cannot run a second instance of the same wallet on this port. It won't listen. Now it's listening only on that address. So let's go ahead and copy our second address. This is our IPv6 address that was assigned when we first set up the machine. Remember, we said enable IPv6. So let's go and copy this, and we're going to nano our digiwage.com file before we run any, any of the wallet or anything like that. First thing we're going to change is the RPC port. We're just going to increment this by one because it's just our next instance of the wallet. And we're going to paste for the bind and for the external IP. Now, one of the things with IPv6 is you should make this in, into brackets. This is standard notation for putting IPs in wallet files because there's some that require a colon and some port. If you had to do this, then it would not know where the port started because the, there's also colons in here. This is the bracket tells it that's where it stops. So we're just going to leave the brackets around the IPv6. Same master node equals one. We're telling it that you are indeed a master node. The wallet is functioning as a master node. We're going to delete our gen key. We're going to take our new gen key, right? Because we can keep creating as many as we want for all of our master nodes. And I'm going to paste it in here.
and I'm going to hit Control O to write this file and Control X to exit. If I cat DigiWage, I like to double check things before I move on. So the only thing I changed, and this username and password can remain the same because it's a completely separate memory instance of this wallet that's going to be running. Everything can remain the same except for the RPC port needs to be different, the IPs need to be updated, and the gen key needs to be updated. So now I'm going to run DigiWage D and it started it. Now watch, if I run that netstack command again to look for what has what is running on port 46003, now I've got two instances of it. I'm listening on for from everyone, I'm listening on this IP and from everyone, I'm listening on this IP, which is my IPv6. And this is cut short just to make it cleaner to read, but you know, there's obviously more beyond that. But now I've got two instances of running. Now if I tell again, who am I? I'm still that second user. I'm not, nothing has happened to that first master node. It is completely untouched. And here we go. We're at 15.624. And that wallet is completely functional. 15.624. We're good so far. Now let's turn our attention to our UI. When I go into here, Let's look at transactions. Again, the checkbox just means, the check mark just means that it had six confirmations and it's fully confirmed for the purposes of spending it. But the master node requires 15 confirmations for collateral. So we're at 11 so far. We can't do anything yet, meaning we can't start the master node, but we can at least, we can at least configure it so that it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of here. So I close out of my UI wallet and I'm back inside my DigiWage data directory. For Windows, you just put app percent or percent app data percent right in your in your explorer view. Whenever you need to get to your data, just put percent app data percent. And in here you'll have a DigiWage directory. So I'm gonna edit our masternode.com file again. In your case, you're going to right-click and open in Notepad. I'm just going to use our text pad here. And I've got my first instance. So I'll make a new line underneath that and call it MN02. And when it asks for IP address, again, because this is IPv6, you're going to have to put those brackets. Now look, we got the same message we did from the first one. You remember that? not capable hot node waiting for remote activation, that's fine. We'll do that in a minute. So I'm gonna copy our IPv6 address, paste, colon 46003. See now when the wallet parses through here, if I did not have these brackets, it would just be a series of colons and it would have no idea where the IP ends and the port starts because it's not, you know, it doesn't really know. We have to tell it by having these brackets around it. This bracket is like a terminator. Now let's put the gen key over here. So I'm going to copy the gen key, paste, space, transaction hash, paste, space, and a zero for our index. And let's save this. I hit save and I'm going to close out of that file. And I'm going to relaunch the wallet. Now let's go to debug console and type master node list conf. And now you see I have two aliases. Excellent, right? This is the first one that's enabled. All right, we, we, you can see nothing has happened bad to our first master node, even though all this work that we're doing in the same wallet and on the same server. MN01 is left untouched and still functioning. Status is enabled. The second one is still missing, which is expected, but it read everything fine. There's our IP, there's our port, so on and so forth. Let's check our transactions and make sure that we're hitting at least 15 so far. So we're at 18, we're good. So let's go and unlock. Our wallet. And before we run our command, we're going to tail on debug.log. Now I just happen to be in this directory, but you can also type tail dash F tilde backslash dot digi wage slash debug dot log 
and this tilde means your your home right slash home did you age and then the dot did you age is the data directory and then the debug file so let's leave that running I'm gonna navigate back here and put start master node alias false MN02 again it says start my master node with this alias false is to lock the wallet or not in this case I don't want it to lock again and MN02 and when I hit enter I got successfully started and look what I got I'm gonna control C out of here for a minute got a new master node entry with this hash and it says hey you have you may shut down the cold wallet and if I go back to send and go to my inputs I've got two locked inputs now so let's copy my MN2 address and let's go back to our DigiWade master node. I'm gonna go back in here and refresh the list. And so it's not registered yet, but within the next few minutes, it will show up on here. I don't know how often this script runs from this website, but the fact that I got this message means I now have a second master node running on the same VPS. And I can shut down this wallet. These are both locked. And I've got this third one with a new change address because I spent again from that other change, it created a second change address. Now keep doing that. That's just how these wallets work. They're meant for, for security really because you're not, the goal of change addresses, you know, I have a, I'll have a video on this later, but the goal of change addresses was really to avoid address reuse. Right? That's what Satoshi Nakamoto's vision was, but we like convenience over security apparently so we like to keep put everything in one address all the time so now I've got my wallet running still coins don't show any different right I still have available I can I can unlock those coins and spend them and and uh, mess up my my master node but if I go here I've got my two master nodes and just for the sake of completion let's just see if it showed up here yet Oops, uh, let's go and copy that address. MN02. There we go. So there's my second address just a few seconds ago. And if I look up my first address, it's also there. So you can see the address of my second one is at some IPv6 address, right? And IPv6s are free. If you set up extra IPv4s, if you go into uh, Vulture under your settings IPv4 and click add another it's, a, it's an extra two dollars a month but you just need the one that comes with the VPS and then you can set up additionals on IPv6 now on the downside the, the upside of having this type of setup with multiple master nodes on the same server is cost efficiency right sometimes these coins really go down and it's expensive to keep them running you're just hoping to, that they recover but uh, the downside is that because I'm servicing the network, my, my two master nodes are servicing the network, if this machine ever has issues, then I've got two master nodes that went down. And so not only do I get hurt because I don't get paid now twice, right? I put all my eggs in one basket, but it also hurts the network. So it's, it's you know, I can understand the, the economics of it. Sometimes with these coins, you have, you have no choice left but to run multiple on, on one VPS because of cost. But I encourage that, you know, if you have the capability to separate these out across um, separate instances, even if they're $5 a pop, e each one, you don't need to set up a $10 machine. You can set up $5, two, two $5 ones and, and run it. But that's effectively it. And now I can shut down this wallet, add my address to the masternodes.online site for monitoring, and uh, let the money roll in. I hope this was helpful. Leave some comments below. I'll put some links and as always I will put a transcript of the commands in the description to uh, help you easily copy and paste.